Hi, welcome to Nichecraft. My name is Cassie and I'm your host. And today I am going to be flipping through Crochet for Every Day. This book is by Mae Zamori and it's available on Amazon. That's where I got mine and I purchased it myself. Um, Mae Zamori also wrote Carefree Crochet, which might be a book you're familiar with. Um, and this has um, 30 patterns in it. And I just wanted to show you what this looked like. I found some really interesting inspiration from this book and I am looking forward to trying to make some of her um, designs. So we've got the title page here and the table of contents. Now all of these are are based on names. <laughs> all of the patterns are names and I have found that that kind of like throws me off when I'm trying to um, find a pattern but you know it's it's the way some people some people do um, she has the abbreviations and terms now these are usually pretty standard but sometimes some people um, write them differently so she's got that here and here's um, a preface and she's talking about um, how much fun she has crocheting so I want to talk about this um, crochet it's like a dress or it, it lays over the dress this picture is what got me to purchase this book because I thought that this was such an interesting design I've had a duster I'm sure a lot of you guys have had dusters and really enjoyed wearing them and I like the concept of having um, a sort of like lacy thing that you can wear over a dress um, to kind of make the like maybe a solid print dress um, make that look you know really interesting and I, I just I love this um I love the way that she she made this and I was really interested in seeing what else she had to offer so this one's called the Helena A-line top and you can see it on this page really well here um get it out of that glare so I don't really like tank top styles um but I think that it really works in this um, example and I really really love this part on the bottom I like the idea that you can wear this over a tank top so for a more layered look too um, but I really like this I thought that this was a really great design when I saw this um, I was like okay I, I bought a really good book <laughs> so in addition to the um, written out she also has um, the symbols and I think that that's nice so this is a top in bolero so the bolero is this kind of a shrug here um, that goes over here and then the top it's kind of cropped um, at least it's cropped for me uh, personally and um, it's got a design that looks like it's made um, it, it looks like it's not made in the round like that it looks like it's made in one piece and then you seam it together at least that's what I would expect um, in that and this is the back of that yeah so here is what she calls a selena top i really like how she created this um uh kind of like a peplum style top right here by gradually increasing these um double crochets in between these clusters here um not certain if you can tell but that's that's exactly how she was able to make that from being kind of smaller to getting bigger um, it looks like this has a um, kind of like a granny hexagon or a granny circle that she puts together to make the top part and then she's got these shell stitches right here and then and then she makes the the bottom part which which is an interesting um, it's a really interesting way of creating a top so um, yeah as you can see we've got okay these are hexagons and they and, and she's showing you how to line them up um, and what you would need to do is learn how to make a whole hexagon a pentagon and a half hexagon or a triangle um, and so by making those you can um, line them up and make that top part and then the bottom part this the skirt um, is is how how you do that so this um, and I started noticing this throughout the book is that she takes the same motif this same hexagon 
and she ends up making a lot of shirts from that hexagon. So I like the idea because it makes it easy to make all of the projects in this book if you learn one, one of the motifs, right? So if you learn the hexagon, you can make not only um, the shirt from before, um, right here, but you can also make this. And I like that idea, but at the same time, it seems like, well, you know, um, it would be nice to learn more from one book, but still the design is really pretty. I like this, this top. I like the way it looks. Um, definitely don't have a problem with that. Um, just wanted to point that out for those of you who um, prefer to learn a little bit more when you're learning new stitches. So this one, she's calling the pearl jacket and belt. So there's a belt right here. Um, it, it was hard for me to spot at first. And then there's a little um, like like a beaded bracelet over here. I think that she also shows you how to make. Um, let me see. Yeah, this is the armband right here. So anyway, this is made from just white um, yarn and then a little bit of this gold yarn right here around the sides and I really I really like how simple this is it's really simple and clean um, I don't think that I would want to make that belt personally um, or the band but I definitely like the the way that this is made so this just shows some of that detail of those gold picos at least that's what I believe these are um, stitches right around the um, the inside of the cardigan there oh now this one I really liked um, oh yeah you can you can make this armband this one's called ivy okay so even though the same the same person was wearing it this is called something else so this is called the ivy armband and this is a Daphne long dress. And, you know, again, what I like about this, I love the idea of wearing something over, over either a slip or an already existing dress. I think that's cool. Um, if I were to make this for myself, I would probably make the sleeves kind of going up a little bit higher just because I personally don't like off the shoulder looks. Um, but that's just my style. And then um, at the very bottom though, she's got that hexagon motif just right along the bottom so um while this definitely looks very very elegant and you've got these shell stitches too and all of that um that hexagon mo motif it would be nice to to substitute something else in there just to learn something different so here you can see the full dress all the way down and i have nothing against the dress i think i think it's great and it obviously has a lot of different um, parts to it. So if you wanted to make this, you would be learning a lot of different ways to kind of conceive of these stitches. Um, but just, just again, this, these hexagons on the bottom, that's the same hexagon that you would learn for the other shirts we've seen previously. So, so now we have that dress that I bought this for. It's called Isabel dress with full skirt and flared sleeves. And I love it. I just love everything about this. Um, so um, she's got all the different sizes and she writes it out. This is the way it looks in back. I think it's important to be able to see that so you can also see um, exactly how it looks there. I really love this kind of mesh looking um, motif here for the top part of this dress. I think that's really cool. And this is what it looks like from the side. And okay, and so we're going to be on to the next one. I just wanted to say something about this. I, I think that this would be just fine worn the way that this model is wearing it, which looks like she's wearing it over um, maybe a cami and then a skirt. I think that would look fine, but I think that I would want this to wear over maybe a spring dress or a maxi skirt, like before it gets to being hot outside, like maybe like in March. Um, but you know, where I would still want to be warm while I was wearing something like that. I think that it looks really great.
I think that it would also make a good robe if you wanted to customize this to make a robe out of it as well, or a house coat. Okay, so the next pattern <laughs> is really fun. Now, again, I would never wear something like this <laughs> myself. It's, it's a little bit too fun for me. <laughs> and I think I'm a little too old for it, actually. But um, so we have this halter top. And if you look at this orange right around here, you might notice that that's the same motif used for the belt um, in that pearl, pearl belt and top. I think that that's kind of interesting. I like how there's a drawstring right here. Um, and it looks like she made it very fitted, which is good. Um, I think that this, I mean, you know, at least the skirt, um, if, if one were to make the skirt like up to, up to the bust and then have straps like this, it might make a good, um, swimsuit, um, cover up and that kind of thing. But yeah, so you can see that she's got, um, some shell stitches or double shell stitches in a row like that. It makes a really pretty pattern. And then she also has the orange um, flower motif again. And then um, she's got the same, oh no, it's actually different. She's got a different stitch for here at the very, very bottom. Um, again, another thing that I wanted to say is I don't think I would mix like hot pink and orange personally. Um, I would probably pick like a light purple and and then use yellow something like that like if I was to make it which I probably won't but yeah so we can kind of zoom in on that flower motif that I was pointing out and she also has this wrap here that um, she includes and so I think that that's also pretty she also shows you how how it's gonna it would be a lace up in the back and here's, here she is wearing that wrap. I think that that wrap would look really pretty um, in any color. <laughs> and um, so, so it's, it's kind of cool to be able to see that and know exactly how it's made. Yeah, really like that. I mean, I really like that right there. And I think that I really admire somebody who can make a pattern as as intricate as this one. I mean, it's, it's really intricate. It looks like a lot of work went into making this pattern. It looks great on the model and all of that. It's just not my personal style. Okay. So she's also got some pillows in here, which I love because I, I love making pillows. <laughs> um, it seems like I always start them and I don't, don't finish them though, <laughs> but I still love making them. Um, I like the idea of them at least. So we've got two different pillows that she shows. Um, so this is what she's calling the Ella, the, I'm sorry, the Ella pillow cover. And it looks a lot like that Lotus stitch. I um, taught the Lotus stitch on my channel earlier. Um, so if you want to do a search for that on my channel, you could, you could find it. And then this one, she's calling the Lily pillow cover. And these kind of looks like, look like leaves here. I think that that's neat. So here she's showing the two together. And here we have, um, vi a violet poncho. And my goodness, there's a lot of stuff going on in this poncho. I think... I think there's too many colors for me, um, personally, but there's a lot of stuff going on here and I think it looks really good. Um, it, I would just need it to be muted down a little bit for me. Um, like maybe two colors <laughs> instead of, I don't know, <laughs> four, I think, but yeah, I think that that's pretty. I just think that it could be muted a little bit, but yeah, that's a really nice one too. Um, I just wanted to say most of these have small through extra large. Um, this one has a one size. So I just wanted to mention that um, if you're plus size, um, it might be hard finding the um, sizing for, for it. I'm going to, I'm going to look at like this one. Okay. Small, medium, large, and extra large. Um, because I have not, um, because I have not actually looked closer into the pattern, I don't know if it would be easy to 
um, adjust that for a bigger size. Um, but that would be something that I'd be concerned about just without knowing. So yeah, she's got lots of colors in here. Oh, I like that they have a kind of like a chart here so you can figure out how it's supposed to go. I think that this is so cool. I love this hoodie. I think it's so cute. Um, not sure how I feel about the pants. Um, <laughs> so this one's called the Terra Jacket Pants and Exercise Mat Bag. And I think that these are supposed to be modeled after like yoga pants. And then this is the um, mat bag right here. Um, and then that hoodie is just so cute. I love that hoodie. So um, she's got charts and she's got the written out pattern. So first she, she talks about how to do the jacket. Again, I love it. I even like the, like even the colors don't bother me. Um, I'd probably make it in just one color, <laughs> but I still, I still really, I, I love it like this, um, as well is fine. Um, so there's that. And then these are the pants and I love how they're kind of fitted like that. Um, I don't think that I could pull off crochet pants. Maybe somebody like I've actually seen people wearing crochet pants like in pictures, not in real life. Um, they didn't look bad in them. I was actually really surprised, but I don't think that I could pull off crocheted pants. I don't think I'd even try, but still, um, she does include not just the jacket, but also the pants. And then again, she's got this, um, yoga mat roll, um, carry carrier, the exercise mat bag. Yeah. And I think that this is cool. I like how she's got these, it looks like single crochets around here. And then she does that shell pattern with all those different colors. And then she's got this nice little strap right here. All right, so here is the Carla Poncho, and it has some things that are a little bit different right here around here and then around the outside of this. I apologize, my cat really wants to be a YouTube cat, so he's trying to get, get on camera, but um, I've, I'm trying to make sure he doesn't jump, off, <laughs> jump up on the table. Um, so anyway, um, you probably can spot that this hexagon um, has come up again. And, you know, again, I, I don't really have a problem with her reusing that, but I would just rather learn more motifs than just that hexagon. So, um, yeah, it certainly is pretty though. I, I have a lot of, um, problems putting them together <laughs> when I'm finally done. So I like to make my squares, like if I'm making a granny square blanket, I like to make them really big so that I don't have to put as many together. Um, it's not that I can't do it. I can do it. It's just, it just is time consuming for me. <laughs> so here we have, um, a scarf and wrist warmers. And I think that these are really pretty. Um, she repeats that flower, um, along along the length of this and it looks like she's got that flower in the wrist warmers as well but it's still really it's still really pretty so this is the crystal sturdy vest i absolutely love the way this looks i think this is so cool i usually would not like a whole lot of jagged angles um, on my clothing but i just love the way this looks um so, and it even says the level of difficulty is easy. So I'd be very interested in seeing if I could actually make that, um, pretty easy or not. Um, it does say that it would use a, um, number six bulk, super bulky yarn. Um, but Hey, it looks good. At least I think it looks good. <laughs> so here is a really cool, like, round vest with like a mandala in the middle of it which I always think that those look really cool but I I don't think that I would ever actually make one for myself um but I always think that they look really cool I love how this is ruffly in the front and it's got um you know it's so it's got ruffles here on the bottom but like you you have like a very clear um, mandala right here. And then in the front is just really roughly. In fact, I might actually like it better if I was some, somehow able to take this roughly part right here and make the whole thing out of that. Um, because I really like that. 
and it seems like it would be a really good, especially in these colors, a really good back to school um, t uh, vest to make. But I definitely love that neck, that neckline right there. I think that's pretty too. So here we have a short sleeve jacket. I absolutely love this one. I love it. I would really love to make this. Um, this reminds me of the Lily pillowcase. Um, and it looks like it's the same motif, but I, I wouldn't mind um, reusing that. Um, so she's got some sleeves on both sides here. And then um, we've got um, ribbing along the edge here. And I personally would probably go on with the, with the sleeves because I like my sleeves to be long. <laughs> but, um, of course, you can, you can do that whichever way. I'd probably put um, at least a button up here, if not all the way down, too. So I think that's cool. Oh, and this is the back of it, too. So I think that that looks really pretty. Right, so here we have a pullover, and it looks like it's made very close to raglan style. Um, I just I love that little touch right there with the with the sleeves and with the neck. And I think there's also it's also at the bottom. Well, okay, so it's not at the bottom, but I'd probably want to add it at the bottom myself. Um, but I just think that it's really nice. It looks simple. It looks easy to make, and. I think that it would be a really a really great for a beginner um, to learn um, to crochet this. I might try to get a hold of her and find out if I can teach this one on the channel just because I'm thinking, you know, I'd, I wouldn't want something too intricate um, to teach you guys how to make, but I think this one would be a good one to teach on the channel because it looks like it'd be pretty easy to make there. So here's another one. It's very similar. It goes up higher. Um, the sleeves here, um, they're wider. And I don't know. Okay, they're wider and they're not the same motif as a different one. Um, and so they call this star wide sleeve cardigan. And uh, yeah, I really like that. This reminds me of the jasmine stitch. For those of you who are familiar with the jasmine stitch, that's what that reminds me of. Yeah. So I think this is cool. So she's wearing this on top of the dress, that dress cardigan, um, the yellow one that I would, that I like a lot. And then another thing that I think is cool is that she's got a scarf, hat, and slippers that you can make as well that has that same motif in it. So I think that that's cool. So that's the scarf. <laughs> there's the hat and there's the slippers right there. I think that's really nice. So we also have a bag here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice that she's using a different motif. It looks like she's got these, um, this like flower motif on the very corners of these, um, I guess, granny squares and granny triangles. And I think that that looks really good. I think that's cool. So we have a blanket, basket, and pillow cover um, using this, this motif here. Um, I personally don't like the colors myself. It, it looks a little bit, it looks like it clashes too much, but hey, that's, you know, that's my own, like I could change the colors, you know what I mean? So she's got, the, this is a blanket, and then she has the pillow cover here. And then this would be a basket cover. I really like that basket cover. I think that looks cool. So here is a yellow pillow cover. I like that one too. This looks like the same motif she uses for the hat, scarf, and slippers. Um, it might be a little bit different, but it looks similar to me. And then we have the bolster pillow. I think that I think that these where you've got like diamonds um, and then you've got another color underneath it. I think that that always looks really cool um, for me, at least. <laughs> now, this is a really awesome um, jacket. So so she the the scarf is not attached to the jacket. The jacket is itself. And then there's also a scarf that that she teaches you how to make, too. I think the colors in this are really nice. They're really stunning. But yeah, I really like that. Really like it a lot. 
So let me see how, if this would be easy or not here with this jacket here. Okay, it does say it's an advanced, um, an advanced pattern, so. But she does have um, 2X, so it goes from small to 2X. I like that. That's good. I, um, I could probably wear a large, but I prefer to wear my clothes bigger. And uh, I think that might be an autistic trait, um, just not liking clothes really close to my skin. And so I like to get, get extra large or 2X sometimes just because I feel comfortable in those clothes. I like this too. I think this is nice, simple, and easy to make, and it also looks good. So I just love the idea that this, this pullover could be made very easily. And, um, and <laughs> I mean, just what I said. So this is called the sky pullover. It does look like there would be some lace work here at the top, which might be challenging for some people. I don't, I don't want to, um, she, she's calling it an advanced level. This also goes up to 2X. Um, but I think it's really pretty. And I just, I really like that. Okay, sorry, I had to cut. I got a phone call. <laughs> sorry about that. I was saying that I really like the way this collar is. It's, um, it's nice and small. <laughs> it's a petite collar, so it's not like real wide. I've seen so many crochet sweaters made with a really wide collar and I always prefer for mine to be a little bit smaller <laughs> you know so I, I I appreciate that in that design so here we have a shawl it's called the fanny shawl um that's really interesting it looks like they've got this fan stitch and they're using it kind of like the crocodile stitch if that makes sense um and it's size small to 2x um yeah, that's really cool. I can't tell if that is just really fuzzy yarn so it looks like it's sticking out or if it's actually really is sticking out. But either way, that's really interesting. It's pretty. Looks like it's a, a lot of wrapping around the hook. <laughs> So here we have a bag. Um, this one's called the Anna bag and it looks like it's made using um, a solid granny square. And um, yeah, it has some kind of different way of um, sewing it together like this. I don't know if it's done when she's sewing it or if it's done in the actual pattern. But I, but I see how when these corners meet, they, they make they make um, this pattern. So I, I'd be interested to know how that happens. Um, and then it does look like there's a little um, top part like that. It's a little bit different. Um, so so she's, got, she's got it right here. I bet that this would require lining it. Um, and obviously um, she has a regular um, purse handle on that so let's see so I'm not quite certain exactly how she would make that but yeah it's that's a really nice looking bag it definitely looks cool I love this um I really love it so this is a blanket and then it comes with this pillow cover I wonder where she put this if you guys recognize this put that in the comments because I have no idea where this is from it looks like it would be in some kind of museum some kind of science museum or something I don't know but I really like this motif right here I guess that it's used with um granny squares that's how she makes that yeah but and then okay so here on the corners it's the same kind of uh, pattern that I was seeing before so it's probably the same one that she was using in the purse um, but I really like it as a blanket especially with this stitch in the middle that's really pretty I wouldn't have ever thought to do that which is kind of it kind of funny because I I thought I was creative <laughs> but, but yeah she's just got a granny square border 
here, which is really cool. She just makes the blanket and then she puts a granny square border around that. That is so smart. <laughs> That's really cool. And again, seriously, if you guys know where this was, this picture was taken, I'd be interested in where that is. If any of you guys recognize that. <laughs> so yeah, so this is how she shows that motif. And in this, it kind of looks like it's a rug. It's a lot more wide than that. <laughs> but yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. And then she has a jacket and it's made using the exact same motif again here. Um, she uses that yellow around the border, but besides that, it's um, white and that very dark navy blue. Um, so yeah. She's got that, and it looks like the sleeves, she made regular size sleeves um, with double crochets in the round, and then right here she's got a little bit of a bell sleeve for that end. So I believe that this is the last, wow, that's a lot of granny squares, isn't it? I believe this is the last pattern. So yes, it is the um, last um, pattern. I'm looking at here, and... I see some of the some of the places she used. She she used webs. Um, she also used Lovecrafts. That's Lovecrafts.com. The Yarn Guys, the Woolly Thistle, LoveKnitting.com, Crafty Cottage. Oh my goodness, that was my cat. <laughs> okay, Crafty Cottage, um, in Knitting Fever, Garn Studio yarn cupboard and art yarns so there's some um information for you about where she got that yarn from i'm always <laughs> i don't know about you guys but i'm always looking at looking for more places to shop for yarn i can say webs is a really great place to shop for yarn especially if you're wanting something really nice um, on discount i would really recommend that that shop um, and if you look for the webs discount um, that's available for some yarns, you'll get even more off. And it's just amazing how much you can save if you shop on webs.com. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this flip through. Um, as far as her design, it's a five out of five easily. Um, the only thing, you know, that I would say might not be for everybody is just that the same motifs are used over and over again for different projects. Now, for some people that might be a plus and for some people that might be, you know, it's like, okay, we get the, we get the picture, you know? Um, and also there's, there's some little details here and there that I don't quite like. Like, I don't like that, that belt. I don't think, I mean, I just don't like it. It's just, that's just, that's just me though. I'm not saying I don't like her. I think that she does a great job with this. Um, I'm definitely glad that I purchased it. Let's put it that way. And I think that this will come in use and I will see if I can um, find a pattern that maybe she'll let me do on the channel. Um, just so you know, I will be um, reaching out to her and finding that out. How about you guys tell me which patterns that you really liked um, too, so I can kind of hone in on um, asking for a specific pattern, but Otherwise, I'll, I'll ask for that one that I pointed out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this flip through and I hope it gave you some information about whether or not this might be a good book for you. Um, I will be posting another video very soon and it will be another yarn dyeing video. So I'm really excited to post that. Um, I will see you soon in another video. Bye for now.